So for the benefit of those with flash photography, <laughs> I told you, get your camera. We have a brand new pose just for you. What is your name? It doesn't matter what your name is. You're fired. That Austin 316 says I just ripped your ass. Welcome to Raw is Jericho. And that's the bottom line. The Stone and hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stuart Vine and this is episode 3 of the My Wet Show Review Series where I look back at all the pay-per-views on a certain year. Obviously this year I, I decided to do 2000 because obviously I've been told it's one of the, well, best years creatively in the wrestling uh, WWF at the time. So obviously I've got through Royal Rumble, I've done No Way Out, now I get to do WrestleMania 2000. Uh, this time I've got a special guest like I did last time. Uh, my good friend from from I know from uni, uh, Carl Dixon. Thanks for coming on coming on, man, my friend. It's fine. You, a, a big show like WrestleMania, you need a a big guest, don't you? So I don't know what you're doing with me, but we'll carry on. <laughs> don't be like that, man. Don't be like that. You know, this this is this is a big this is a big deal. It's first time, I think, of on like you know audio, we've actually talked about wrestling really. It might just be, considering the amount of conversations we've had over the years, finally we decided to record something. In your last episode, how positive was uh, was was your friend Josh? What, about No Way Out? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was quite positive. I mean, to be fair with the show, it's like that show was very... Uh, it was similar to Royal Rumble in the sense it had a couple of duds, but nine times out of ten it was pretty solid. Well, let me just say... I'm not expecting the same positivity from myself for this show today. <laughs> I, I've got to be honest, going it, watching this, because it's obviously the first time I watched uh, two, uh, WrestleMania 2000, because obviously I didn't watch start wrestling in, two, in two, 2001, so I skipped this entire year, minus why I'm doing this podcast. <laughs> so it was sort of going through, I was like, oh, it's rubbish, and I was like, oh, it can't be that bad. Then I watched it, and then, ah, it's not the greatest WrestleMania, is it? No, I mean, like, I would consider it one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Just just the, the, the talent that they had on this roster, the, the mid-card, and even in the main event, the talent that they had and between booking decisions and, and uh, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll go through a lot of it, but it just wasn't what it could have been. No, I mean, I don't know what it is. Obviously, the, the, the infamous about this paper I've always been told there's no single matches. Well, if you count that cat fight match that would last like two minutes. But that technically... Well, I wouldn't count that as an actual wrestling match either. <laughs> no, no. But except for that, sort of, uh, basically they're all either tag team matches, multi-man matches, or just constant just gimmick matches. I mean... I've got no problem with multi-man matches, like... Uh, I don't mind multi-man matches. They are they're they're exciting usually, but it's the way you book them. And this this show is an example of how not to book a WrestleMania to to me. Well, to be fair, because they're a show in general. Because we all we all we all look back at the uh, Achitero as this glorious time for wrestling, and it was. But some of these, uh, some parts in these matches are the sort of reason why. Yeah, I'm kind of glad we don't do these kind of stuff anymore in wrestling. Because, <laughs> you know, overbooking, uh, constant interference, all that kind of stuff. It was like they it's they overbooked these matches ridiculously at times, especially in the main event. And it's all about the McMahons. Yeah, I, I literally just finished, funny enough, well, before call, I literally just finished watching that. It's just, <laughs> what the hell? But anyway, uh, so I guess we just said, should we dive in or it's like... Let's 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 uh, dive headfirst up uh, a a drowning pool. God, this this is this is going to be a tough one. So, um, <laughs> what a shocker! We have all the ones we decided to start with. We decided to start with possibly one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. I would consider it definitely. I mean, it. I mean, even the opening package. If you look at the opening package, is literally all about the McMahons. I don't think The Rock comes on for a while into that opening WrestleMania package, and he's the biggest star in the company at this point. The biggest babyface, because obviously at this point um, Austin's out on was it uh, I think, uh, to work on his neck? Neck, yeah, neck surgery. It, I think it was his neck. Yeah, and uh, I mean uh, to give them some credit, 
the company was in a weird place at the time. Like you say, Austin's out, Taker was still out. Um, Kane had just come back, but wasn't really hot. And then you've got Mick Foley wanting to retire at this point. But you do have the likes of Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, Edge, Christian, uh, Chris Benoit, all of these talented wrestlers wanting the next shot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. did you just say... Did you say the? Uh, I did. We're yeah. gonna have to say his name on this show. It's no, WrestleMania 2000. It's, it's, it's a running. Uh, I mean, I tried to on my last episode with my, my mate Josh. You like, I was like, oh, I might have to edit that. And he was being a bit of a dick and decided to like say it three times so I couldn't edit it out because just to wind <laughs> me up. So, but yeah, we the, got, the way I look at it, there's there's a difference between Chris Benoit the wrestler and Chris Benoit the person. And if you can sort of categorize the difference, you can still enjoy his uh, uh, career. I think. Yeah. I mean, did you watch the documentary? Have you watched the? Uh, I haven't Sunday? yet. I haven't yet. It's on my list. Yeah, I would. I would suggest watching it because um, I decided to watch it before WrestleMania 36. Not a good idea. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah. So, yeah. But at the time, anyway, 2000. They were just like, it's it's weird seeing how like the st- we know where these stars are going to go. Then like Kurt Angle's, uh, you know, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just it's well this. It, it's quite interesting that this is quite a historic WrestleMania in the fact that Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, Edge Christian, Eddie Guerrero, the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys all make their WrestleMania debuts and Benoit. Yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just crazy in the sense of like looking at like where they started. Cause if you, but so, it's, especially it's like, it's, it's good to watch back from the start of like the, the, the Hardys, the Dudleys and Edge and Christian where, where it all started with the infamous like 2000 like i think every match they were in was amazing but anyway i think um this happens a lot when we talk about wrestling we just like keep not getting started you know just going in a tangent all the time so well you had all that talent you had all that talent and you start the pay-per-view with a big boss man match really out of all, as you said, out of all the things to start a paper, you always everyone knows if you're going to start a pay per view, you always start with like the, the the high fly match or like the match that gets everyone hyped. Really? Well, I mean, I think I think I'm going to try and defend them. the The thinking behind it might have been the Godfather was a really really hot act at the time, like the 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 fans loved him. He would get one of the biggest ovations on the shows each week so i can see the idea of having the godfather in the opening match but then i don't see the idea of having big boss man and bull buchanan win what? yeah I, I i don't know i mean it's i don't know if it is a thing because obviously a fan fan is out of no way out 2000 is like only two faces won that that entire show it was all heel wins and it's just it's, this is another example of that it's just like it's WrestleMania. Why can't why can't we just have like the faces win for a change? Well, yeah. I mean, this seemed to be uh, created in the idea of pushing Bull Buchanan, who, let's be honest, is only ever known for being John Cena's secondary in uh, in his whole word, word life days. So True. it doesn't really matter either way. This match is so bad that even JR's ripping on it on commentary. That's how bad it is. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I've got from this match that is kind of, I was like, oh, because was the bit where, I, what was the bit when he was whipped into the corner of Buchanan and he sort of like jumped and then done like a, was it like a, like an elbow from the back, like the way he jumped so high? I mean, it looked quite cool. I didn't think, I was like, from that guy that size, I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's different. But yeah, it's like, this was nine minutes, this should have been at least, this was about nine minutes long and it felt like, like, 15 yeah i mean like i say again the idea of having the big boss man in a match at wrestlemania in the year 2000 considering it was nearly 10 years after he was in his prime it just feels it just feels very very outdated yeah i mean especially when he had that with it was no way out with the whole thing with taz where that minute that match was like three minutes and then it was like 10 minutes of just a a beat down taking way too long and then yeah i mean the weird thing about this match is like it's weird seeing ice tea like as a rapper yes yeah he did he came out with godfather and dealer brand didn't he i mean 
I'm and I'm not the biggest Ice T fan. I don't know too much about him, but I suppose at this time was he a big big get for the company? I think so. I, I guess. mean, I don't know. I mean, two thousands was a pretty big, you know, year musically, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> look, look. I, I don't know. I was six. True. No, I was five. Well, you, you should know better. You should know. You should know your music when you're five. <laughs> Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Keep 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 forgetting. Oh, uh, but but we did we did go from a Bull Buchanan victory. Let's let's call it a victory. It's a victory for him, maybe not for the fans. Um, and then <laughs> no. and then we went to uh, the Hardcore Battle Royal. Oh my God. I'm sorry. This just feels like like if this was 2016 or 17, this is your kickoff show. Well, to be, That's what this well, is. To be fair, the opening match we just talked about would have been on the kickoff show. So with this, it's just and and this again is one of these that Jr. Just re- he, he's he's on a roll in this show. He like I don't know, I don't know who who annoyed him before the show, but he is ripping into it everywhere you look. I mean, they've shot themselves in the foot with this one by putting it uh, by putting it with fifteen minutes. So they have to fill <laughs> fifteen minutes. I mean, it's like of just constant shots. I, I I just love the way they like you had to like, before the before the start of the match. We must lay down the rules, and he had like they all sitting around a conference table, just saying, "Well, it lasts fifteen minutes," and you know, it's like, "Oh, is that the rules?" Oh, okay, so basically, there's no rules other than this match has to last fifteen minutes, and then and it, it does feel like there's like a a shot to the head every. 30 seconds i mean it's it's grueling to watch at this it, now when you look back on it i'm, I'm looking at it, i'm like oh no i mean just think about it just how many people are in this it's like this feels like what the andre the giant battle royal was before they had the andre the giant battle royal i mean yeah when I mean, you got was you got crash holly taz viscera uh the mean street posse oh my god the mean street posse <laughs> i think the mean street posse were quite underrated to be well, honest well i remember I- not in terms of in ring in-ring talent because they never really had the opportunity to show it anyway but as an act they got over yeah i mean i, mean, it would, it, I got to be honest a bit of building up to this like hardcore match it was quite that their, their skits with uh, crash holly trying to get the title was hilarious i mean and and crash holly was the original our truth let's be honest yeah it was i mean i just i think i think it's just like the way it's because i it was just after no way out and this is all of a sudden yeah 24 7 and then they were like, they weren't like, oh, okay, next week we'll sort it. It was like, nope, end of the show. They just went for it. Just like ball into like a kid's ball, p- ball, ball pit. Um, they all dressed up as clowns and then trying to attack him, trying to win. It's just, <laughs> they went balls to the wall of it. And with them kind of skits, it worked. But in this match. A match at WrestleMania, of, uh, what the hardcore title should have been at this WrestleMania is a number of skits backstage. That could have worked. No problem. But to stick it in a match in the ring, like you say, it was get everyone on the card, get them their payday. That's what it was. But it just didn't work. And there's there's so many different layers to it, quite interestingly, like Taz, right? Taz went from the Royal Rumble, debuting in a big spot against Kurt Angle, squashing Kurt Angle... And here he is in a hardcore title battle royal. Well, to be fair, it's like it, it, he hit his heights too early. And then after that, it just he's like he's gone down and down and down on the card very rapidly. It's, but it's not like there wasn't a, like, a ridiculous amount of heels that he could have took on in any other sort of feud in this. Because the, 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 the roster is very heel heavy at this well, point, think, as it well, is. Well, think about it. Yeah, like, obviously, we talked about like Taz Visser and all that. We had, was it obviously Hardcore Holly? Wouldn't it be a hardcore match without Hardcore Holly? Then you had Misunoku and Funaki, Kai and Tai. It's like, if you watch World Rumble 2000, it's just they didn't get the message and not on the match and kept getting chucked out. And Je- uh, was it um, and Ke- uh, Jerry, like Jerry the King. Is, is, sorry, is that is that the Royal Rumble where uh, Tucker Michinoku takes that horrific bump to the back of the head? Yeah, and uh, sort of uh, Jerry the King is like, I'll show it again. Oh, again, I'll show it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah c- but it's quite interesting now, actually. I don't know if you mentioned this in your thing, but just a little tidbit. The reason they kept showing it again from a TV point of view is because I think Kai and Tai were meant to keep coming out but the bump that he took, he actually hurt himself. So he, they couldn't keep coming out. So they had to fill the time. Oh, okay. Genuinely. I did not know that. But I could explain it because to be fair, it, it did come across as quite, that's a bit harsh, mate. You know, it's, 
I get it. He's land on his head, but it's like four or five times kept. Uh, you know, let's go back to him. Like, okay, calm down. But yeah, so they're in this match, obviously. Am I the only one that's thinking this match should have been a hardcore title match, six, seven minutes max, and it's the two Hollies, cousin v cousin for the hardcore title at WrestleMania? Surely that was the match to go for in this division. If you're going to really book it as an attraction, because they've been building it for months between the two of them. Yeah. Well, it's just the whole thing. It's like, uh, was it, there was Elroy. They called him Elroy. So, because obviously he's like, it was upstart, like, sort of like, got a lot of heart, but, you know, he's basically, he always gets his ass whipped. And then Harkov was like the, I like the sort of like, you know, tough cousin type thing. And they were building this up quite nicely. But, yeah, I mean, there's only, there's only story done here. The rest are just in it because, you know, why not? Like, you know, Moss, yeah. Frasher, uh, obviously the APA. I mean, you know, APA were involved in the like in the match between like the Hard was it the Hardys and um, uh, Edge and Christian, and, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we haven't got nothing for you now. Okay, we'll just stick you in this match because you know the yeah. APA. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, I absolutely get that the the ballroom, the ballroom, the the uh, the the barroom brawlers type things would work in a hardcore match. I'm not debating that. I'm just thinking there's better ways to go about it, especially as they absolutely botch the finish, completely <laughs> ruin it. Ah, yes, I remember. I after, 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 even Jay, as you said, like Jay was like totally crapping on this match, and he was like, uh, well, at the end, I loved it when he was just like. Was that a free? Oh, let's look at the f- let's look at footage, and he goes back, and he's like, "Yeah, he kicked out," and it's just like, "Oh, but the decision's made." Meh. Nah. Okay. It's like I don't know if it's like a Jim. Was it Jim White? It's a Jim White thing because that's like twice he's <laughs> and it's botched a, a finish here. Tim White, Tim yeah, White, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I d- I don't know whether it was the referee's fault. Let's be honest. The refs. Well, no, it was the referee's fault. I'm remembering it now. Yes, because he stops he stops counting when he doesn't kick out. Is that yeah, right? and it's just it just I, I I don't know it's just like a weird camera angle. So all of a sudden it's like that they cut it really quickly because they know they went ah crap we f- we screwed up here. But I mean, I mean for, if you look at the like moments in the match though, there were some cool stuff in there. I mean you had uh, there was like I don't know if it's like I know the hardcore title is known for quick title changes, but it was kind of ridiculous. And it says Taz won it and then Visser won it and then for like ten minutes or like Visser was just champion. Well, this is why I'm confused. Of like, in terms of your actual lineage of the title, do, do they do they count? No, I don't think so. In theory, no. I don't, I, do you know what I mean? Because in theory, Crash Holly went in as champion, and then one of the Hollies came out as champion, depending on which way you look at it. It's just, oh, I, just, I, I think the problem is it was just too much stuff going on, and it's just like when the cool thing about when like obviously back then we still done like head uh, shots to the head, and you know like it, it's hard to watch. Yeah. But it's on a really on a, on one note. It's hard to watch, but on the other way, it's just like not because I'm a sadist or anything. But it's just it's it's kind of got that nostalgia feel to it. It's like oh, I remember days when you got headshots. You know that Im- that that sound. I think I said in the last podcast, like the sound of the impact. It was like you always gave you that. Oh, yeah. But in this match, they went too far because everyone was doing chair shots to the head. Everyone was doing getting hit with weapons and novelty sort of wears off quickly. And especially when you've got to feel 15 minutes of this. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's very difficult because, I mean, chair shots, obviously, for a health reason, you don't do them. I get that. But in terms of a story, like you say, they can be used correctly. I mean, a vicious chair shot playing into a specific match and, 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 and the story of that match is great. This was just, ah, I'll just hit you in the head with this, I guess. That's all this was. Yeah, it, it wasn't even a funny thing. I think it said that it was so a guy who'd done a review on it, and he said, "What? Well, well, Jim Connett? I'm surprised he wasn't suing because he had a, like a tennis racket. So, so they were hitting someone with a tennis yeah. racket, and it's just like didn't do anything. I mean, what one? That's definitely that's definitely a joke on Cornet. Someone backstage just said, "Do this. Let's do this. Guarantee you." Yeah, it's just I've got to be honest. Jim Connett is. Uh, you know how much he loves gimmick matches and especially comedy wrestling. He loves it. He is the biggest fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Biggest fan. Loves it. Uh, speaking of comedy wrestling, the next match on the card, 
was head cheese. I hated head cheese. Absolutely hate it. I know I'm really going to say negative to all the people that are listening to me for the first time here, but really, you've got a guy like Al Snow, who technically was one of the best wrestlers on the roster that included Jericho, Benoit, Angle and Guerrero. At this point, technically in the ring, he was sound. And you're sticking with Steve Blackman, who is the, the, the chasm of charisma. He uses literally he uses charisma. I, I, I kind of I kind of use the sort of analogy for me. It reminds me of like I always find like where I look at myself. Like I'm I'm Steve Blackman, and like somebody else like you or somebody else is like the guy saying we need to get your personality out, man. Need to get your need to get your personality. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> it's crazy. You are the Steve Blackman of life. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. Other than uh, obviously, I don't have a you know I don't I don't know how I don't have a black belt or you know can do cut martial arts. But yeah, let's go with that. It just it just feels a bit wacky and uh this whole match does uh, the whole head cheese thing i actually quite like the heel tag team t and a r are actually quite an underrated tag team i think test and, and albert are both pretty good talents true but let's be honest here let's be honest here um we all know what the attention was in this match and sadly it wasn't anyone in the oh, ring yeah. no but nobody cared about the four wrestlers in the ring and that's that's the way the time was then with the attitude era there was only one one person they were watching that was the whole reason for the match which is why it probably went seven minutes too late yeah i mean i think if you, if you look at the like build up like, the, like literally him coming to the ring it was just like what, what was what was the zoom in like it was just literally a zoom in of a breast it was just and then zoom out like oh right yeah so we all know why we're watching this match eh come on even, yeah, even it, exactly they also had Sorry, was it was it Chester the Cheese guy? Mc, McCheeson or something or something like that. It's like is that is it? Yeah, I, I just I got to be honest that seg guy backstay segment when it's sort of like Al Snow as much as it's uh, you saying with like Steve Blackman. It, it in some ways it kind of worked in some way because obviously Al Snow was sort of like he had he was he was good at being that un, like he played that character really well. I thought. I mean, Steve Blackman was just Steve Blackman, but. It was just it was it was kind of funny Al, in some ways. Al, Al Snow is yeah, Al Snow is very underrated. I just find it hard to get behind a storyline that is literally ah, we don't know what to do with this guy because he is so bad charisma wise. Let's just say he has no charisma. That's the story. What? Yeah, and what, you know what's even funnier about the storyline? Kind of got that head cheese thing. Kind of got over though. That's that's the why being thing. Yeah, I the thing is. They had to Judy are crowds, right? I genuinely think if you look at all the, the, the gimmicks at the time, nearly everything would get over. Because of how many people there were in the crowd, somebody would like it. And then people just enjoy cheering at some point. So particularly at this time of the, 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 the this this year, like two thousand, it's if you look at some a lot of the gimmicks in the attitude era, they shouldn't work. But they do. Well, to be fair, perfect example is we talked about the opening match, you know, the Godfather. How, that had no right to get over. Especially about a person being a pimp, having these holes. There's like, there's no way in hell that should work, but it somehow did. I guess, I guess, I guess it is true what they say about like, you just, um, obviously like you need fans to get over, uh, to, to get over sometimes. But like, and especially when wrestling was like, as hot as it's ever been, ever. So like, you're just invested in all this stuff. Yeah. Well, you need fans. You need fans to get over, unless you're doing shows without fans. Hashtag stay home. Yes, nice, nice, nice one. And very true. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean this. Yeah, I mean, the ending was pretty much like let's get this over with. <laughs> let's be honest. It felt like okay, okay. So like ever since like Twist Travis was running away, and obviously Big Cheese, where his name is like, he's basically getting a bit horny. And he was like liking Twist Dress, to be honest. And then after that, they were like, okay, cool, job's done. So that's, you know, done a press, uh, Albert done a press slam. And then that big elbow drop that Tess does from the top. I think it's a good, I think it's a good ta- tag team finisher, actually. Albert hitting the, the, the press slam and Tess coming off the top. I, I, like I say, I think they were underrated as a tag team. Considering some of the tag teams we would get down the years after that, the likes of, I don't know, the Basham brothers, for example. Dyson Don was it Dyson I'd Domino? T and A ain't too bad. Like, Juice yeah. and Domino, yeah. God. I mean God that was bad. I mean I, I mean it's kind of well to be fair with Albert, I'm kind of happy that you got a tag team partner that was, you know, 
Day Sinister being with Big Boss Man and like I want I want I never we all crap on you know like gimmicks that sort of like all of a sudden just oh they hate each other and then next week they're just back together. Perfect example at this time was Big Boss Man and Albert. They came to blows, then they're enemies, and then one week later when Raw, they're like, oh, they're, f- they're friends again. I'm like, yeah, what? It's like I always yeah, because because a few weeks a few weeks after this event, there's another thing where uh, Test is doing Stephanie McMahon's bidding with with TNA, and I'm like, really? This is the woman that left you at the altar six months ago. You're really gonna just well go well, along with it, really? As, as, as- as I think with the sad, sometimes you actually they really play up the soap opera feel to it. You know the old logic where they sort of in soaps they all of a sudden forget. Like you could, I said last by last podcast, like if someone you could like you've just murdered your but your wife or something, and then six months later you're chatting, you're down the pub having a chat. You've like forgot about it. <laughs> it's like they don't have linear kind of stories in that way, and that's what. Is that is that a, a, a I'm guessing that's like a that that'll be a C Z W angle that would he's killed his wife so he wants revenge. <laughs> Could you imagine the WWE doing that? <laughs> well, they did try it. It's not the first time. It won't be last. Uh, they haven't tried to you know use uh, murder to um, try and establish a storyline. I mean, he did do that thing where Vince was like killed off. Like, the, oh yes, oh yes, and Paul London was way too happy about it. <laughs> oh yeah, didn't, didn't that technique? Paul London. <laughs> definitely planted the bomb in that car there's no way he didn't because you've got vince mcmahon walking down everyone's sad because he's sad and paul london's there he's got a grin on his face he can't control himself he's that happy because he knows what he's done and what's about <laughs> he's basically happen. gone all jo- he, that's he, the only he's gone, he's gone all joker man he's got the face like he can't he's so giddy with like happy with his handiwork he's just he's just laughing his head off which, but then it answers the question because, of course, the, the whole idea between Vince behind Vince dying was that it was going to be revealed that he had a son and all this sort of stuff. Paul London is Paul London McMahon. Maybe well, mysteriously afterwards, he mysteriously disappeared from television. Dis- disappeared. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Yeah. Well. Well. I quite like Paul London. We're, we're getting off. Yeah, track. this happens a lot when I talk to it, when we do when I do this with uh, Josh and all that. It's just like we just go on tangents because it's like. We love talking about wrestling, and this is awesome. Well, this match wasn't, no. Well, <laughs> well, the next one certainly was, because it saves the show. Triangle ladder match. Basically a TLC match. I don't know why they called it well, a triangle I don't, ladder I don't think, match. Was there any... I don't think TLC was a thing at this point. I think they were just, uh, maybe this was Tested Waters thing, because uh, yeah. Edge and Christian Stu didn't have the sort of Gachetto thing yet. It was more like, it was more the Dudleys had the tables, and obviously... Uh, the Hardys are obviously the ladders because they're the risk takers but yeah I don't think it I think it was more of a I don't know if it's like a feel, feeler sort of like test it out you know give them 20 minutes yeah yeah see definitely, what they can do definitely and didn't didn't they raise the bar I mean even like weirdly this match is probably the worst of the three but in, if that yeah, makes but sense in, but in I, yeah, I mean, but in the sense of like, they up the game. The others are so good. Yeah, they get better and better and better. Like this is still an amazing match. Like your good four star type of match. It's still incredible. The best thing on the yeah, card. Yeah, I mean, they set up. Be, well, they set, they set up the story quite nicely. To be fair, I mean, it felt it felt gradual. You know, for, first it yeah. was like a few between the Dudleys and the Hardys, and then Edge and Christian got inserted. And then they sort of like, uh, they inserted by going against the Hardys. And then all of a sudden, then the Dudleys became tag team champions after uh, beating uh, the New Age Outlaws. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of way, they sort of uh, made the tag team division better because when, because now the, the best tag teams have are fighting for the titles instead of just being New Age Outlaws have got the titles because, well, they've got the titles. So this, this, the good thing is this is the start of like a month long like you know the entire year of just the tag division being top notch being awesome yeah it's quite interesting really because looking at it like you say the Dudleys are heels big heels um Edge and Christian are basically heels I don't think they're quite fully turned yet but they're on yeah, the I think way they just turned like a week before like they literally just turned right and then you've got the Hardys 
who are the baby faced team in the end. Genuinely, if you didn't know the result beforehand and were watching it for the first time, you would think this is set up for the Hardys to finally win the tag team titles. That's what you would think. But they're really, really quite clever with a finish with, with, with Edge and Christian. And this, this win really propels them to the top of the tag division, weirdly. What, what do you get? Fair, like... Uh... If it's TLC, I think they won all the TSL matches. TLC matches. I'm pretty sure they'd won majority of them, it, yeah. It's quite funny. It was like, when you think about it, because obviously the Hardys, you would think, as you said, think that they would be the ones that sort of, would be the ones that like, win, would be advantage in this kind of match. But, yeah. They kind of, they haven't, well, I don't think they've won one yet. I think, well, except for obviously with their big return in 33. Yet, yet. But it, yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean yet? <laughs> well, until I, I'll probably be found to be wrong if someone probably looks at them and says, Yes, they won one. I was like, okay, you're right. I'm wrong. It happens now and then, but this match, this match was just spot fill, just mental. Spot fill, right? Right. On, yeah, but the spots were so like, particularly at this time, it was like, what is going on? Because like the moves and the bumps they were taking off the ladders and off the edge of the ring and all this sort of stuff, I'm thinking to myself, how are you? How are you walking away? from this match I, it's it's mental and, uh, well, and obviously from we've got hindsight now in our future it's like this is just a tipping point of how crazy they went I mean yeah, this is a blueprint it literally is a blueprint of what kind of match you're going to see in, in the future it's like there was a spot where you saw like, yeah, yeah. was it hard, was it uh, Jeff Hardy was climbing a ladder and obviously uh, you got edged at, uh, was it on the top rope and he hit a spear when he was cl- climbing the ladder yeah. and that's sort of like a test a taster for the uh, setup for the Infamous, uh, it's many, yeah. uh, 17, um, spear. Good God Almighty, yeah, that kind of stuff. It's just, it's, I mean, if I've said it before, because obviously, I watched that table match between the Dudleys and the Hardys. I mean, Bubba Ray is like, is the master at selling, I think. He is very, very good. His facial expressions are incredible. The facial expressions on, on, on Bubba Ray, it, like, Bubba Ray is always the most entertaining of the two. Which is probably a bit unfair on Devon, but Bubba Ray makes that tag team. He's so good. Yeah, I mean, I also forgot to realise that they actually were putting on a southern accent at this time. Proper mm. becoming like a trailer. Because uh, cause obviously, no, because obviously when they used to, when I used to watch that, at least they were like talking nor- like talking normally about an accent. But in this one, they were pu- I noticed that they were putting on this really southern accent. I think it was coming and going at the time. It's like Kofi's Ghanaian accent. It was like when they could be bothered to remember to do it. Yeah, they did it. But most of the time, it just fizzled out. And this is the thing with stuff like accents. Who cares? Who cares if the Dudleys were from the the South or from New York? Do you know what I mean? Nobody really cares. And now, I mean, it's not like it's not a quiz here. It's it's an it's an observation. It's just like, yeah. wait, they done a salmon accent? I don't never knew that was a thing. I just thought they just came in. We're just the badass Dudleys and just, you know, or as um, JR likes to, those damn Dudleys. Those damn Dudleys, yeah. I mean, I also like uh, Bubba hitting the RKO before the RKO was the thing. I know there was the diamond cutter, obviously, but Bubba Ray was the middle in between DDP and uh, and Randy Orton, it feels it's like. like the RKO and out of nowhere before RKO and out of nowhere was a thing. Yeah, well, he hit a, a Bubba cutter off the top of a ladder. So for a man of Bubba's size let's say to hit a move like that off the top of the ladder fair play fair play to him i mean he's un- he, he, he the sad the, the sad truth is he is under like i wouldn't say underrated like because people don't because obviously he has a obviously he's not a tag team but single wrestling is actually he's actually quite competent in the ring yeah i think it's it's one of those obviously he had his run in tna where he was at the top and he was a heel and he was great in tna I'm not debating that um but I think the WWE were cl- quite clever with the Dudleys, where there was always a ceiling. There was always a ceiling with the Dudleys that they were going to be so good, but they were never going to reach superstar singles runs. Do you know what I mean? So they were quite clever with how they do it. This is the Dudleys at their very, very best. Well, they did try, didn't they? Remember the, the, they did try and split them up, and then you had the Reverend Devon as the, with, you know, weirdly. Really f- and then he had like a Bubba 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 Way was basically his Dudley persona, but just by himself on his own. Yeah, 
Yeah, that and then is they, I think they realised a couple of months later, they're like, yeah, this is a bad idea. So then you put them back together. Then, as they say, the rest is history. But the the biggest spot, though, probably would be Jeff's swanton off the giant ladder through the table. Jeff is absolutely crazy. To be fair, though, it's like it, when he was climbing on top of it, though, it's just like you can see, it was like it was, it was still shaking a little bit. Yeah, and I was just like, oh god. I mean, if I did that, I'd be like, nope, I'm climbing down. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Good. When when Jeff Hardy's scared about a particular bump he's going to take, you know it's going to be mental. So when he's walking up that ladder and you can see him shaking, I'm sitting here thinking, oh my god, he's going to kill himself. He's actually going to kill himself. I, I mean, you got to be honest. That like, I love that camera angle. I think that that sort of like a, was it ground camera angle they did. So it yeah. looks like it's, so it looked like this is what like you're seeing it from like Bobby Way's perspective if you look at it like that, and it kind of made that moment just way more like epic. The finish itself, though, Edge and Christian on the table collecting the belts together. I like that. I don't. I wouldn't have liked one person pulling like Edge pulling it down, pulling both titles down. I like the idea that Edge and Christian are together. They're they're as a tag team and their best. I, well. Down the line, we'll see different, but I quite like the fact that they painted them as equal. Yeah, I mean, or to, well, I, what, what I also loved about that is um, because obviously now we look at it, obviously who's more, more well remembered, Edge or Christian? It's not really a debate, is it? Sadly, it's um, was well, it Christian mm. still had a good career, but it's Edge. Christian but, still had a Hall of Fame career. There's no debate in it, but Edge. He's a superstar. Do you know what I mean? He is... Rated R? Superstar? Yeah. He is, like, if Edge was... If Edge was a baby face throughout the main of his career, he'd be considered up there with Austin and Cena and all this sort of stuff. The run that the, the Edge has on top is incredible as a single star. I think I saw something on his 24 documentary the other day that Edge has won the most championships in WWE history. Which is mental. What is he like? Was it a ten time? Ten time? Yeah, ten. Ten, ten time. time world champion, uh, countless tag championships, intercontinental was titles. You has, has he ever won the US title? Uh, no. I can't picture it. I don't think he's won every title, but I think he's won like he's he's won like like in terms of the amount of reigns that he's had with a championship belt is more than anybody in in the company history, even now, which is mental. I mean, to be fair, it's like, as as I said it in my WrestleMania uh, 36 review, you should check that out as well. Um, but uh, yeah, not you know, set a subtle plug there. But but uh, yeah, it's just uh, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Up there with the Rock. I mean, it's it's one of my f- he, he does one of my favorite cashings of all time. He does. Um, I loved him on his run on SmackDown. I just like that's the reason I love. And he's obviously he's got one of the coolest theme songs on the planet. Mm-hmm. I mean, Definitely. You're telling me Definitely. you weren't popping at Royal Rumble when you saw when you saw uh, Edge come out. Yeah, it, yeah, and it, it, like I was popping, but also I knew he was going to come back in the match. Everyone sort of knew, but it still didn't take away from the moment. No one was popping because of the surprise. Everyone was popping because they were just so happy to see him. And he finally done it. Ring. it. Again, it's a sim- it, for me that was similar to the WrestleMania 33. Uh, with Return of the Harley Boys, where it's like we we, yeah. we heard rumors, and then we heard that they had a match at Wing of Honor, and the loud match. You're like, oh no, they can't do it now, they can't be here. And then they turned up. You, I mean, w- w- I watch you at walk about in this in Brighton that we have to set up at some point, hopefully, maybe one day. But uh, when we uh, when this is all blowed over, but yeah, it was like mm. you know, like you have the mark out moments, proper yeah. like you know nerd like when people say nerd, nerd nerding out. This is what yeah, it was. Yeah. So it's just that, and the Edge came back. We're just like, yes, it's just like so good to see Edge back. But it's just, yeah, it's just. I just I got to so Edge and Christian was just like we haven't even got to the point when they start the whole run with, you know, when they when they proper turned heel and start become like you know, you know, there's no flash photography and like the pauses yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, we haven't even got to it's that coming. point yet. No, no, the best that that that's what's so great about matches like these where. You can see Edge and Christian and the Hardys in particular, not so much the Dudleys, but they're young, right? And you can see that how great the match was and how great the moments they were creating then 
the best was still yet to come from them. And that's that shows how good this roster was. Like personally, I think the current roster now is the best they've ever had. Whether they book it correctly is the different story. Well, but this roster had the 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 right wrestlers, the right entertainers, and the right booking majority of the time. Not particularly this show, but the rest of the year is what made it so good. And 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 it's kind of nice with the whole. Um... I don't know if it's just because, like, in this day and age, char- there's no such thing, really is any character anymore in some wrestlers. So it's like, it's like everyone sort of had their own, like, like gimmick and it kind of worked for their own personality. Yeah. But, uh, I mean... They made yeah, it just, work. Yeah, it's just... And, yeah, I, I just I, I just love the way... This is why I like just doing this podcast in the morning because I get to go back and watch this this whole run from the start and then sort yeah. of um, see it blossom. It's going to be... And, and it does certainly blossom. One thing that didn't blossom was the only singles, and I say singles with exclamation points and, and, and bunny ears because it was really a match, the cat fight. We have to, we have to speak about this. We're gonna, I say let's be brief about it because it was a brief match that no one cared about. Even before it started, JR says, this match isn't about stars aka the star ratings because he knew it would be awful he's been he was he was he was on fire with meta he was like sitting there going yeah i've had this show sucks <laughs> yeah honestly God, jr I mean, I, was throwing them out there jr was pretending he was dave Meltzer at the announce table honestly he was he was <laughs> just inside references <laughs> everywhere i mean to be but the, the, the one person that enjoyed this match the most was jerry jerry the king Jerry the King Lawler. He he was at, as as um, we all know in this era, when it came to the when he came to the when he came to the the women's matches, he was he couldn't control himself. He, especially when his um, soon to be wife is in this match. Yeah, that's true. Are, are they not married by this point? I don't think so. I, I think they not. got like they would get together because obviously that's the whole reason why he left. I think early two thousand one because obviously they fired yeah. her and he was, but and he left. He, but he like, went on board with it, was he? No, but it's he was basically. You know, flip. He was basically flipping out like a horny teenager. You know, he was loving. He's loving <laughs> this. He was loving this. But I mean, I mean got- the, the the weird thing is, right? Even at this age, and I, like you say, I know he goes on to marry one of them, but it just still feels a bit creepy at his age. He, like now, like like twenty ten onwards, it's even worse. But even then, it was like. Uh, okay. I mean, what do you think? Just think of the people involved in this match. You had obviously the cat with Mae Young that was doing a whole thing with. Uh, she was flashing, but she was a flash in flashing everything, and she just gave birth to a hand. Oh, the attitude here is wild. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching that. I was I was sitting there, and it's just it was just the whole thing was cringe in the highest degree. Watching it back, and it was just like they got birth to a hand, and it's like. It was one what? of those segments that makes you embarrassed to be a wrestling fan. Do you know what I mean? Though one of those segments that if someone who doesn't watch wrestling is walks in, looks and goes, "What? What are you watching?" Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was. It doesn't do. Um, it doesn't do us credit, does it? It doesn't. No. It makes us look like we're like, "What is wrong with you? Why are you watching this rubbish?" It's like I always go back to the uh, was it wrestling isn't wrestling that documentary on YouTube. I always go back to that when people say that because yeah. it's like it's not a wrestling it's not it's not wrestling it's a show about wrestling. Yeah, that's a good way to point it, point at it. It's quite interesting though because this went this was the crowd loved it, right? At this time it worked. If you did this now, everybody would hate it. Everybody would hate it. Because obviously now we have a bit more was we we have a, we want better quality in our women's matches and it's sort a bit of more m- respect. Yeah, I mean, you would. Yeah, you could see why there was. Uh, we think about it. It didn't change into like 2011, 2012, because even then they were still doing not much like this, but the women were still disrespected. But in this one, it was just. <laughs> Jeez. You got the you got the cat. You got Mae Young that was flashing, basically doing the whole like I'm eighty, but I want to flash everywhere. And then you got Terry. Was it Terry that just t- that just turned heel after turning on the Hardys? And then just basically being like a was it a, a she devil is what they called her. That's like okay, that's weird. And then obviously the um, fabulous Muller, Muller, 
that you can't really talk about now because she's got a bad reputation as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even commenting on that. I'm not even going there. It's it's just uh, it is what it was. What it was. The match was what it was for the time it worked. Now, when you watch it back, it's a bit like, uh, right? Can we move on? Can we get past it? Do you know what I mean? When you're watching them back now, I usually skip these when yeah. I uh, when I watch it, but obviously for reviewing purposes. Um, unfortunately, I have to have to watch it. Oh yeah, unfortunately for you. Um, the radicals next though, so I'm happy with that. The radicals are uh, just so much talent in a group. Even Perry Saturn, even Perry Saturn. I mean, you could. I think I've got to go, go great about this group is one. The debut was amazing. I love that debut. Yeah, it, it was a class- well. Well, it's a classic. Mm. I I kind of did. It was a classic sort of like debut where it was like they're sitting in the crowd. They're not going yeah. to get involved. And what happens? I love their, yeah, their debut appearance, yeah, it was amazing. The fact that they made them lose to DX in four different matches the night after was, was a bit like, pff, cheers. New stars, oh, look, they've lost. Uh, no, I, I think that, that wouldn't surprise me if that's another one where I was in with things like WCW guys, like, tsh, yeah, you're going to show, you're going to teach us some lessons here. Yeah, because ben, Benoit was world champion when he came in, didn't he? Yeah, I think he'd won the WCW title and left as champion. I think. Is that right? I think so. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, we're talking about like just after, because obviously 2000 in WCW, let's not go into that. <laughs> so oh. that's not, I mean, if you want, if you that's, want to. That's deep in the wrestling hell. That's where <laughs> that needs to stay. This match, though, it's it's... Obviously, it's to progress Eddie and China. That's the whole point of the match. But it kind of works, weirdly, as a little short 10-minute, six-man, six-person tag, whichever way you want to say it. Yeah, I mean, it was a quality match. I mean, it was not like a, it was a good tag team, you know, wrestling, in the sense of it was well-constructed. Compared to when you've got most of the majority of the other tag team matches were utterly rubbish. Crap. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to say trash, but, you know, not great. It was trash. <laughs> yeah. Most most of the show so far, apart from the ladder match, has been pretty trash. And then you got this, and it was like, this was just solid. It was nothing bad. It wasn't good, but it was just it solid. It was solid. It was solid. Um, the one thing I would say is, and I know we'll see him later on in the show, Rikishi was the the whole reason that too, that too cool were popular, right? Yeah. Realistically. Yeah. And to not have Rikishi with them here, it just feels a little bit weird. I know we're progressing Eddie and China, and I get that. But I feel like you could do that without China in the match. Have her just run in for the finish and actually do a proper six-man Radicals versus Too Cool. I feel like it would have been a better match. It would have been more of a WrestleMania match. This is good. It's solid. It kind of feels like you could watch this every week on Raw rather than a WrestleMania match. You could say that about the first two matches, to be fair. Like could could you always like you know take them off the card? I mean yeah, the, but this is the problem with the show in general. It doesn't feel like a WrestleMania. It doesn't feel important. That feels ironic to me because obviously now um, uh, with uh, the WrestleMania thirty six, a lot of people said that doesn't feel like WrestleMania. But it, it feels like in terms of the way the matches were set up and the way the matches were, it feels more of a WrestleMania than it feels more important than this does, and that had no fans. This just feels like, oh, okay, China's China's got a pin on Eddie, which she could have done on, on Raw, and then then what? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, to be fair, though, it's, it's watching this back again, it's like, we know how amazing Eddie go, go, goes in the future. But I just, I kind of like the bit with the whole bit when it's like, China comes in, he's just holding the ref, like, get away from me, get away from me. It's just like, it's like he's sitting there saying, you know, oh, I want a bit, you know, she wants a bit of Latino heat. But when she, when he comes, when she comes in the ring, he runs away. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, it's, it's a weird one, because obviously the night after this, so WrestleMania, China's after Eddie, she, she pins him in the match. The night after, she, she aligned with him. Legit. To to be fair, she seems to be like because obviously it seems to be a fig where she beats someone or is involved in a match. She aligns with them. It's like Royal Rumble uh, got beat with the Intercontinental Championship match, and then uh, the night after aligned herself for Chris Jericho, and then yeah, that that ended. And then now it it seems like because obviously the criticism back then is like China's ability in the ring wasn't great. 
No, and and considering the people in the ring, Eddie and Dean Malenko, even Scotty Duhotty, I would say as well, she doesn't really, really compare to the two. I just, I feel like if you're going to do the turn and put Eddie and China together, WrestleMania was the time to do it. Not the roar after. Or, or do what you said with the whole, like, just do a tag team match. And then yeah, have, or, like, or go, t- go all out and have a proper match. Or have, like, Eddie's, like, the manager or something. Or, like, maybe maybe um, milk that sort of um, thing with the, uh, the uh, was it, when he'd done his elbow in, like, the first night he was there. Yeah. First match he'd done yeah. his elbow in. Maybe milk that when he's a bit more. And then sort of, uh, yeah, they're sort of, like, they both attack each other. But near the end, they basically, like, I don't know, do, like, a... They don't want to attack and then kiss or something, and then they get together. And then, yeah, and then... I mean, there's, to me that those are your two options here. What they did was fine, but it was fine. It was just fine. Yeah, you could have gone all out and had a big six man tag match and had a proper good match. Because if if you'd have had Eddie Dean Malenko and Perry Saturn against proper tool call with Rikishi there, all six men could put together a good a good fifteen minute match and have an exciting tag team match. Instead, this was just a little bit like. Yeah, it was there. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I mean, one thing I noticed was here, it's like... Oh, I feel sorry for the, the freaking Radicals, man. They've they lost... Uh, was it They've debuted, and nine times out of ten, they've lost the majority of their matches. I mean, obviously, Dean Malenko became the like, heavyweight champion, but as a team, they like, they made their pay-per-view debut, they lost. And then they, go, then they go have a match with WrestleMania, and they also lose it. Well, this is... This is probably the swan song for them as well, for the Radicals. As a team, they never really went back to them as a team after this, do they? So, uh, I, I have no problem with that. I mean, oh, hilariously enough, that actually sets up quite nicely into um, another member of the Radicals. Yes, yes, this was the match I was excited for. Triple Threat, Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho. It's, It's like... A dream for wrestling. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, well if you watch uh, their match at, uh, what's it, No Way Out, when he had the Philly in, Intercontinental title. That, that was... That Benoit and Jericho, yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, it, I think it's like you saw, like, you obviously know the potential of where they were going to be, but it f- kind of worked with the sort of, like, Jericho being the high flyer and sort of, like... Uh, Angle being sort of a obviously an amateur wrestler, sort of being a, sort of using his skill and like in that kind of area, but and this one, if, I think the problem, I think with this match, it's kind of like they haven't figured out the rules of t- uh, triple threats yet. You know, like in certain rules in triple threats, it's sort of like no, they had, yeah, they haven't got it down yet, have they? No, because obviously the rules always are like you know you somebody you, you all three attack each other from the start, and then all of a sudden one person gets chucked out, and then they, and then then two. Um, have a fight, like continue going, and it sort of mixes between, so it sort of gives it a breath, breath of fresh air. Um, but I mean, this one was just, it was, it was weird. It was just, it felt off, you know, a bit clunky. It was booked weirdly as well. Obviously, Kurt Angle comes in as the double champion, I believe, at this point. Is that right? Yeah, yes. he obviously won. Kurt Angle was dub- yeah. double champion, and then. Obviously, you look at the two titles, and I get that one fall is going to be one title, one fall is going to be be the other. I actually like that as an idea. But you've got the Intercontinental Championship and the European Championship. Now, which one is the most prestigious championship? Which one do the fans care about more? The Intercontinental Championship. So why do you have that, the first fall? No one cared about the European title at that point. Well, no, I mean, it wasn't really... I mean, it was kind of booked well, but it was sort of more just uh, like another title. But because obviously you think about who had it before Kurt Angle, it was Val Venus, and this it was just oh he won it randomly. Yeah, yeah. It, I, whereas to me, if you had the Intercontinental, t- I mean, it's, uh, I like all three in the match, and it was a good match, but it could have been so much better. And I think actually Jericho himself doesn't like this match from what I from what I read. He calls it a disappointing match in his book. So well, it was in a sense of the potential. And sort of, uh, there was like, it just it felt a bit clunky in the sense that most of the time, majority, all three of them were in the ring. Um, the, the sort of, uh, the near falls felt a bit off, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was, it felt like it was just, okay, I'm going to hit the suplex. And I'm going to hit another suplex. There was no drama. It didn't feel like there was, any, like to me, you've got this, you've got Angle, who's fantastic at playing the whiny little heel, right? 
and you've got him losing both belts here. Yeah, you've got him losing both belts here. You could have played into that. You could have played into Angle getting more and more and more desperate. But it kind of felt like Angle wasn't involved in the match at times. It just felt he just felt like a a secondary part of the story, which he shouldn't have. Yeah, been. well, I mean, he didn't. Well, it's like I don't. I can't remember. Did he get the? I think he like he but he didn't get pinned. He did. He wasn't. He wasn't involved in any of the finishes, which I'm assuming was the idea to protect him because he'd have had to be pinned twice so i get that but at the same time it just feels it feels as crazy as that ice cream van that's going down the street there's an ice cream van that's been going down the street for four days in a row now during the whole crisis (laughs) sorry (laughs) just is that the kind of interest you have you know it's like it's like he's basically gone batshit crazy yeah it's I like this match, right? Genuinely, I like the match. It was second best match on the card so far. It's light years better than Bull Buchanan and Big Boss Man or the Cut Fight or or Head Cheese. Do you know what I mean? It's two different worlds of wrestling. But you look at these three in a match and you think five stars, to be honest. You do looking back on it. At the time, maybe not. Maybe Angle was too green at the time a little bit. But you expect better than what we had. Yeah, I mean, you got to get to a point like we haven't even got to the... Again, it seems like... It seems to be saying this. We haven't even got to the potential bit yet. We haven't even got when he's challenging for the WF title and then gone full on like, you know, he's probably hitting his peak. Yeah, but he ain't far off it. He's still very good at this point. So I just... I just feel like it could have been better between the booking, the wrestling itself wasn't what you'd expect from the three of them. It just, like you say, it felt clunky. But luckily for the hemp, they're on a show that's so bad so far that they still looked amazing. Yeah, especially when, uh, again, the only a good match I can feel from this match is obviously the triangle um, uh, ladder match. That was the only one that's like felt like it. Oh, that's a WrestleMania type match. Yeah. Yeah, and like to book this match at WrestleMania with a talent that all three have got, you would think, yeah, that's a WrestleMania match. But it just like like you say, it didn't live up to expectations. It wasn't as good as it should be. Maybe it was a little bit short for a two out of three falls match as well. I would argue. I mean, what was it? Both matches were sort of like one minute was um, uh, like seven minutes, and the other one was one about like five minutes. So. Uh, they could have possibly put, I mean, they could have put, could have probably put time off that would be get to it that extremely long main event and put it on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. There were there were definitely options. Um, speaking of weird options, DX versus Kane and Rikishi. I I still and like like you, I've watched through the TVs building up to it, and I've gone. I mean, I've gone past WrestleMania at this point, but. I can't remember, I can't remember why this was a match. Why Rikishi is teaming with Kane at WrestleMania. It just feels wrong. I've got to be honest, the only thing I can think of it would be that is because of, um, obviously where the point I was at is all of a sudden, I think The Rock was going against like, uh, was it DX or like Triple H? And it's sort of, oh, we need a partner. And then Rikishi came out. Which made sense. Rikishi and The Rock felt right. Rikishi and Kane. Uh, to me, you could have done Xbox versus Kane here and blow off the feud they've been building for ages. Well, they kind of blowed it off. Or like then, like I still, I still don't like the because um, obviously they had the match on the way out. That Xbox shouldn't have won that match. Kane should have destroyed no. him. But for yeah. some reason, I don't know if it's just like cause, you know, D, you know, DX lost the titles that night, and obviously they couldn't like he couldn't have another person lose. So maybe that was like he survived type thing, but. Yeah, I mean, it, that should have ended there, but they kept it going. And then, yeah, this is quite a short match when you think about it. It seems to be a, a trend with um, X-Puck and like Road Dog and that. These like, last three pay-per-views have been in really short matches. But this was this was short in the sense of it was the right call. It was it was it was a, a blitz. It was a sprint through. They hit their spots. They did the stuff they had to do. They popped the crowd with a tombstone, and they got out of there. It worked. Yeah, I mean, it, it did in that sense, but I've, 
Oh my, oh, but, but to be fair, the match is secondary compared to the actual match, what happened after the match. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but the best thing about this whole WrestleMania was Paul Bearer doing a DX chop over Pete Rose. That is one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all time. Well, to be fair, I've never seen Paul Bearer do as much stuff as I've seen in the last two, two months <laughs> of watching this. I mean, it was just like, start of the match, he was sort of like, Ter was it Terry? Like, yeah. Uh, was it Tombstone Terry, as they call her? Because you get, like, back in the days when you can tombstone women. And um, mm. it was like, oh, she deserves it. I've done it now, for good reason. No. <laughs> but, like, I just loved uh, Paul Bearer was just, like, you know, slapping her and chasing her. Like, say, like, I'm going to, like, he's probably getting, like, involved in the match, sort of. Like, kind yeah. of, he's not like a manager, so I'm really getting involved. But he, he, he was emotionally invested in his son's future. That's what it was. <laughs> Indeed, he was. He really felt so betrayed that his son was treated this way. It's weird. It's weird that Kane and Pete Rose is is one of the most well booked long storylines in WWE history. It is around three years. I can't believe that. I just I don't know actually how it started. It's just like I think what summed this up is for me was like when. Uh, you done them really many many years later, and the Kane did the um, them segment, them therapy sessions with that Daniel Bryan, and he's like, yeah. "Well, uh, what is your feelings?" And he's sort of telling him, "But I have an unhealthy, unhealthy obsession of uh, the tombstoning Pete Rose." <laughs> tombstoning Pete Rose, yeah, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. I wonder how much they paid Pete to take the stink face. Probably enough, a lot of money. I mean, the question is. The kind of money they probably were paying you would. The question: Would you, if they're paying like me, you know, two million or something? Would you? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Take it, take it. It's two minutes, two minutes of your life. Only in wrestling can you get away with some that someone putting their ass in your face can get over. That's your whole gimmick. It was, it was, it was a weird gimmick and a weird match. Um, Rock's promo was next, which is fantastic, by the way. Well, The Rock in general, is, um, I don't think I've seen a bad promo by him in this entire year yet. No, he's, this is the year that he really comes into his own on the mic. He runs through all the catchphrases here as well. Lay off the smackdown, the lot of it. This is The Rock at his peak on the mic, it feels like. I mean, it's, not, it's no Rock and Billy Gunn, The Rock pretending to be God. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your name is type thing. I He's not mean, burying anyone. Well, that was the, the most, the brutal, that was the most terrible burial. That, that, that's the, all right, yeah, it's a burial of Billy Gunn, but at the same time, that's the best rock promo of all time. The best and He's one. done some pretty damn good ones over the years. But yeah, yes, I mean, yeah. I mean, also one thing I, I probably should, we should bring up in a sense, they kept doing these weird, I don't know if it is about like, throughout the show, they kept going like, to the, as you said, the McMahons. And it kept going to be, between like, you start off with Shane, you know, the big show, like going to be fair, that promo was just beat for beat. Like, you know, it's going to be game over. You know, rock's going to, going to, you're going to dis, you know, plug uh, the electricity of the rock. He's going to, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Right. And then you got Vince's one was a bit, that was weird. Well, Vince's one was quite clever. Actually, it was quite clever foreshadowing because he says, I'm going to make it right with everyone, which with how the pay-per-view ended. Yeah. Is really but clever. it felt I, I think in the delivery it felt a bit off in my opinion it just felt I don't know if it's like because you, you, you it will kind of when it comes to promos you find it like slick it's quite slick for me I don't know it, it felt yeah. a bit like a bit off tilt and then you got that I wouldn't be surprised if that was on purpose though because people are like you say you've come out of the promo going that felt a bit weird rather than going huh he's gonna turn on him tonight yeah do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then you obviously got the weird thing with was rarely you see Linda McMahon and a Mick Foley. Yeah, I mean, this was McMahon mania, and 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 the sad thing is you've got a fatal four way elimination match for the WWF title, WrestleMania main event, and genuinely Vince thinks the most interesting story is the family dilemma, and it wasn't. Well, watching this, watching this match back, obviously I've just literally watched it an hour ago, <laughs> so it's fresh in the memory. It was just. It should have been what it was always. It was going to be at when when the Rock won the Rumble, is the Rock versus Triple H, the best face versus the best heel at the time. But we can blame Stone Cold Steve Austin for that, because if you read the dirt sheets, they say 
that the the idea that they did at uh, Backlash, I think, was the next pay per view where Austin comes back and The Rock wins the title. Spoilers. Oh, what? Oh, there we go. That's episode, that's episode four done. Nice one. Thanks, man. There you go. Over. Done. You're, wel- you're welcome. Thanks for that. Um, <sighs> but uh, uh, what they did there was supposed to happen here, but Austin wasn't medically cleared to, to be involved at all yet. That's, in theory, why they went with the finish they did here. I'm not saying it was a good idea. It absolutely sucked. But... That was their thinking behind it. I have so many issues with this match. Starting with the fact that the big show, you've made him out to be this monster, right? And he's beaten in five minutes. It was ridiculous. I got I got I don't know if it's big show just maybe this was a trend of like his luck just kept it started here and it was just never got to the heights after this to be fair. I mean Hey, hey, listen, listen, you say that. This ain't the first, this ain't the only WrestleMania that he's main evented. So. Good point, good point, my bad, my bad. I mean. He has re- he has main evented WrestleMania, the biggest WrestleMania, the, the WrestleMania so big it had to be split over three nights in the end. Okay. All right. But I don't know, I just feel big shy. I always remember him with Paul Heyman, the bit when he turned on Brock. I love that era. Yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get there. Well, maybe that might be maybe that might be season two. Maybe that's my next one. Yeah, maybe. Um, but the big show was eliminated after four minutes, and it was like, right, okay. The whole thing with Foley was weird. Well, he shouldn't have been back. To be fair, he shouldn't have been back. I don't blame him for coming back because you turned down a WrestleMania main event and that paid it as a wrestler. No, I get that. The gossip at the time is that it was supposed to be Jericho in this shot. Oh, this I'm, shot. I remember this. Remember seeing in the um, there's obviously bad. You see, like there's, there's posters still around on the internet where it used to be. It was Jericho on the network. The poster they use has Jericho. Interesting. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't, know, I don't know what the story would have been for that. I mean, unless I don't, know, I can't, I don't know what the story was to be like Jericho would be involved because at the time of like they're pushing him, he didn't, it didn't look like why would he catapult into the WWF title scene. That is true. That is true. And Big Show's only in there because The Rock botched the finish of the Royal Rumble. So, all right, fair enough. It should have been a singles match. Give them credit, though, uh, for that. I mean, as I said before, it's like it's the perfect example of a feud that uh, it's... Uh, yeah, they made a mistake, but they made it work. Yeah, they did make it work. And, and the story they told going into it was good. The crowd were hot for it. Mick Foley... The people love him. It's brilliant. There was one weird bit, though, where The Rock hits a standing DDT, covers Mick Foley, and Triple H breaks it up. What? Yeah, I even, even to be fair, even JR was like, why is he doing that? He doesn't, you know, or maybe he just wants to, was it, he doesn't want the, was it, he wants to take out Mick Foley all by himself. I mean, we're not even, we're not even, I don't even, we're not even glossing over the uh, the botch, or I think it's a botch of uh, Mick Foley doing that. I think he's trying to do an elbow from like the second row outside, and he basically completely missed it and landed on the bottom, the bottom of that. That Spanish announce table would not break. No, yeah, he totally botched that too. And then obviously, pedigree on the chair, bye bye Mick, see you in 2000 and well to the the end of 2000 as a commissioner i think so and then we got to basically what was the main event a singles match between triple h and the rock and actually they went what 20 minutes this is the problem with it it was it was like it was elimination type rules but it's just like this it's like it's supposed to be like the first four supposed to be the longest and then they get, the, then they get the first, the you know, first person gets eliminated, and then yeah. the second person gets eliminated quicker. Then near, when you get near the end of the third fall, it's like another like five ten minutes. Logically, that's what would happen. With this, they done the complete opposite. <laughs> they done the first fall was really quick, then the second fall was like another you know, fifteen minutes, and then or twenty minutes, and then the final fall when they should, probably should have ended it ten minutes after, <laughs> gave another twenty minutes. So it's basically you've watched three matches in one thing. Yeah, but that that final match that went so many minutes, you can take three minutes off that they were literally just in the ring doing nothing as Vince and Shane just beat the crap out of each other. Literally yeah. nothing happened. Well, it's like just, yeah, it's like 
you know, Shane hitting was it uh, Shane hitting uh, Vince with the, uh, the TV monitor, and then just like, and then the chair. Oh, the chair shot is vicious. It's so vicious. Like, how many CEOs of companies do you know that would do that? It's true. I give him credit, Vince. As much as the guy's got is, um, he's taken a beating over the years for the sake for the sake of entertainment, and he doesn't mind embarrassing himself for the form of entertainment. But yeah, it was like it was just constant beat the hell out of him for like was it five? Was it three? Yeah, three minutes, and then he was like, oh. Oh, he has a match going on. Okay, now we're going, you know, all of a sudden, it's the problem. It's just like, again, it was, in the end, it was the perfect example of the attitude about his worst. It was a clusterfuck. Yeah. Another yeah, person comes in. You know, and then Shane, sh- yeah, and it was, then you got the situation. Yeah, and then Vince goes, and then Shane's still around, and then he gets involved. Yeah, and then- Vince, Vince comes back, Stephanie's involved, and then the turn. Uh, let's be honest was always going to happen because Vince and The Rock just didn't feel right. It, it weren't It weren't right. Well, no, we're talking about... No, it's just... It's not Vince. And then he sort of... T- yeah. So, yeah just, what I found it weird is, like, it didn't. It took two shots with the chair. It only needed one. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. I love JR, though. The whole plain dumb... What the hell did he do? Like, I mean, yeah, it's obvious what he's done, mate. It's, it's pretty obvious. And J- then... J- JR is just... I... It's like... he As, as much as like he... His reaction to stuff made this error. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it saves this booking, to be fair. Because then... Rock kicks out, like you say, another headshot. Uh, and Triple H, the heel champion, covers to retain the title in your WrestleMania main event. The heel champion... And they booed the hell out of it. And we're talking about like proper, we're talking about heat back in the day when it was like pantomime level stuff where like they're throwing their cups of whatever, like, you know, Coke and, you know, beer and everything and just chucking it at Vince because they are pissed. How many times has a heel champion won the main event of WrestleMania? I can only think of WrestleMania 9, technically, when Yokozuna beat Brett. And we all know how bad that show was. So maybe this is the the answer. Don't book your heels to win WrestleMania main events. I it just I just find it so ironic when we know about Triple H as a heel. Is that he seems to be? Obviously, we've got this one, and in in the future, when he's got the whole thing with Booker T, just stop booking him to win all the yeah. time. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It was like, was this the Reign of Terror before the Reign of Terror ever happened? Maybe. I mean, like, you could have put the title back on Triple H later in the year, not a problem. But The Rock should have won it here. The Rock should have won it here. You do a big rematch, and then you move on. They they prolonged it and prolonged it and prolonged it, and it, it's... It was all set. It was all set. It was... Every, if you if you watch enough wrestling, you know how it cooks, kind of works. It was set up for all this screwy finishing and all these chair shots, the McMahon's getting involved. To eventually, the Rock prevails. Rock bottom, one, two, three. He has the title. He's defied all the odds because he's been screwed over and over and over and over again. And he, uh, WrestleMania finally gets gets the upper hand and he finally wins the title. That yeah. should have been the plan. That should have but been again, the plan. But again, you got you think about it. Royal Rumble, he's got you unlucky. No way out. He got screwed by another chair shot to the head. <laughs> and then, then he gets screwed for the weeks after weeks to even get into the match. And then. When he gets into match. Well, I would say that um, Backlash had a a massive buy rate. Like, really big buy rate. So, if that was their plan, it worked. Let me throw you a booking idea, though, right? Because, just hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. If the whole idea was that they wanted to push it back a month so that Stone Cold can be involved in the finish, right? Why not? Have The Rock win here, win the title, big moment, right? And then the next night on Raw, he's screwed out of it again. And Hunter wins it back. Do you know what I mean? Steel cage, whatever, three on one beat down. They they cheat to win. I know it's only a day title round for The Rock and that sounds bonkers. But surely it's better to get the moment at WrestleMania and then work your way towards what you want to do with Stone Cold. 
to so me. So basically, do what they did. To so basically do what they did in two thousand and one with the whole Austin turning heel, and then sort of the whole like uh, the Rock gets screwed again in the sense of like in a steel cage match where it's two on one. So basically, do what they did in two thousand and one, but do it in two thousand. Yeah. I, I just I think it would have worked because then you could have still gone to like in terms of uh, the whole idea was they would they need he needed Steve Austin to even the odds because he keeps getting screwed and screwed and screwed, right? Have it that he keeps getting screwed and he gets to WrestleMania when he finally pulls it out, but the next night it's taken away from him, so it's even worse that he's getting screwed again and again and again, and then finally you use Austin to to, to for him to win the title back again. I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether it's the right movie in the sense of that's a lot of title changes, but it's better than this, I think. It's again, it's just, we all, obviously we have, that was the, the beautiful thing about hindsight is that we obviously, we can think of this now and go, well, that's what they should have done, beat for beat. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but you say that, the people that are booking this at the time know that that's where they want to get to. They want to get to using Stone Cold at Backlash because that's the only time that they can use him. So yeah. in theory, they should then be booking it like like that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm asking for too much. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, I think, the, I think, because obviously we, we look at again looking back at this, it is like top notch storytelling most of the time. So it's not like. These were like little nitpicks and stuff, but this these ones are valid complaints because this, my God. I mean, apparently, uh, we're doing a review, or what's a li- reading review on this. Some guy said, uh, at the time, this was uh, voted one of the worst WrestleMania main events of all time. Yeah, on the uh, newsletter, weren't it, on the Observer? Yeah, it's a bit much. It's a good match. It's very long, horrifically long, but... It's a good match with the wrong ending. If you have The Rock win this, finally, have Vince turn on him, but he doesn't quite get it done. The Rock rock bottoms everyone and gets the 1-2-3. You're looking at a four-star match. The finish brings it down so much. Yeah, well, it's just ironic because you've got like, two, it was two WrestleManias in the world where the finish let it down in the main event. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I mean, like, you, you can look to WrestleMania before where The Rock was the heel champion and you had Austin. And it, the, the, it made sense to do what they did with Austin winning the title back. Brilliant. Right. But you could have done this here. You could have had, oh, we want to we want to keep it on Rock because Rock's doing so well. But no, they did the thing that made sense. It did the thing the fans wanted. And at WrestleMania, that's all that matters. Do what the fans want. Yeah, it's sort of more WrestleMania. I, as we are, we all know wrestling. It's sort of like if it, if if they always go by it as a TV show, WrestleMania is like the t- the season finale. Yeah. Everything ends there, and then after WrestleMania, that season, next season. Well, yeah, you, you you use WrestleMania to build your next story to me as well, and it kind of feels like they've done that, but it's the same story, and I feel like we've been here before. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but, but I think what I'm looking forward to watching this back more because obviously I'm only in like the third, like the third month, fourth month. So it's like all the stuff that we all remember from the actual era, like 2000s, is I think like this is just they're just starting to build, but then it looks like near like you know after backlash and all that kind of stuff. That's when they start really like killing it and also you know backlash. Backlash is one of the all-time greatest pay-per-views of all time. Seriously, it's it's it is amazing. It is amazing. It's much better than this one. What would you, if you had to give this a rating, what would you give it? Uh, we do. I, I should we do by should we do by grades or we do by like you know? Star, How do like you stars? usually do it? I usually go by like uh, uh, rate, sort of ratings like seven out of ten or something. But I would give this like a five out of ten, mm. maybe a six, five point five or six. Maybe if yeah, you go by the, that, that the ladder match was pretty like bumped up everything. So it, it's a hard one, yeah. Because it, like you say, it feels to me that the ladder match is it's going to sound really harsh. The only thing worth watching on the whole show, realistically. Do you know what I mean? To go back and watch, it feels like it's the only thing worth watching. The 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 main event, you haven't missed anything. Weirdly, no. 
The triple threat that I thought would be so good was slightly disappointing, really. I'd give it a four. I think I think I just like that ladder match way more, so I'm going to give it a five. But I think I basically felt so far from the matches I've watched, uh, pay for you to watch, this is the weakest. Yeah, I mean, like we say, like I, I right at the start of this, I called it one of the worst WrestleManias of all times. It's not WrestleMania nine. I'm not saying it's anywhere near that, but it might be the second worst WrestleMania of all time. Well, it's you know it's they forget well, it's forgotten a lot. I mean, I mean I don't remember. Half, I mean, when you think of WrestleMania, it's not brought up a lot. Let's be honest. They don't bring any of. The, I mean, they don't even bring up the ladder match really. They sort of every time every time I talk about that feud, they always talk about the TLC, TLC number was it number two? Yeah, TLC two at uh, WrestleMania at seventeen. Yeah, because they did they did TLC at the SummerSlam, I think, and then WrestleMania. It's weird though because modern day fans complain so much about WrestleManias. Obviously, not particularly this one because we, we were lucky to get anything. But like other WrestleManias in the past and the big shows, and yes, they're horrifically long, and they are. But the actual quality of the shows are much better than this was here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I just started this retro review as well. I said it before, it's because I want to, because um, watching WWE these days is hard because it's like, it's it's doesn't we? There's not a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff doesn't work, and it's just hard to watch. So I wanted to go back and watch 2000 as it's possibly the greatest creatively, and sort of see why was it great. So I can sort of figure out, oh, just like basically rekindle my love for wrestling. Mm. I, need to, I, need, I needed that. I, I said, like, this, this is like my therapy session. I need that thing to remind me why I actually watched this. Yeah. And put so much time and effort into uh, reviewing it and all that kind of stuff. So, so far, it's definitely uh, the first two pay views were definitely like, yeah, now I get it. This one, not so much. It was a letdown. It was, it was a letdown. And uh, hopefully your backlash one. Uh, will be, like I say, the pay per view is fantastic. So I hope you enjoy that one. Oh, I think I will. I mean, I think I think um, after back, I think backlash after this pay per view. I think uh, West Main. I think backlash. You know, it's kind of got. This is where it's like top notch type stuff. I think proper. I mean, I I I've, I cannot wait to get right to the end with the uh, Armageddon one, with the one with the um, six way hell on a cell Armageddon hell on a cell match. That's just... I've heard of it. You funny, it's like it's the most famous thing, but I've never watched it, so I look forward to that at some point. But should, yeah, I mean, should be good fun. But yeah, so that was WrestleMania 2000. Uh, so sorry that uh, uh, the first time we talk about a wrestling show and we pick and I um, and I picked the <laughs> WrestleMania 2000 for the review, and not like a one. That... As I say, like you say, WrestleMania, it's a big show. You need you need a big guest. Hopefully, I'll fill those shoes. <laughs> Oh, definitely, man. It's uh, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of it's kind of nice to obviously speak to somebody else about wrestling as well. Because obviously, I talk to my mate Josh all the time about it. That of and it's just like it's nice to see another perspective on it as well. It's maybe this could be a thing that I could do with getting guests on and maybe talk about wrestling with other people. Or we get we get if if this um, lockdown is going to be longer than three weeks or four weeks or a month or so, we'll see if we can try and get you back on. You know, oh yeah, got... for sure. I mean, if this lockdown happens till September, like some people are saying, I think we'll be in two thousand and five by the time we get there. So it's fine. Well, talk it, talk. Um, so obviously, uh, this of uh, this not the only wrestling thing you do. Like obviously, you've got a uh, you do a bit of a uh, well, technically it's like a fancy booking game. Obviously, I can't. Uh, what was it total total extreme wrestling? Isn't it total extreme wrestling? For anybody who was who's never played it, if if it's it's so if you're watching these shows and going i wish i'd have done this i wish i'd have done this it's the game for you like you say i do have a uh youtube series starting back up again on wednesday it's weird timing it's almost as if it was planned um yeah starting up again this wednesday the 2007 save which you've already delved into yourself where you ruined my pay-per-view card well well, to be fair though you did you did say anything goes so let's be honest um, and you did, and you gave me some layout of your stories, but it was all basically free reign. So it, you could blame me, but you could also blame that you just basically let me run wild on your whole. <laughs> you should have been more strict to saying, "Can't do that, man." You're just well. Running. We return on Wednesday with SummerSlam 2007. Now, SummerSlam 2007 originally had 
a card of main event Randy Orton, John Cena, which actually weren't that bad. Um, but then you also had the likes of Triple H, King Booker, Rey Mysterio, Chavo. Oh, did you say King Booker? You know how you got to say it in the way that King everyone King Booker. Um, Come on, man. You, you know that's what you got to do that every time. Come on. And then, um, but for me to sell it, I've got a 2007 uh, SummerSlam card that includes Brock Lesnar because why not? Includes Chris Jericho because why not? Um, and all I'm going to say is it's a good show for D Generation X. And that's okay. what I'm going to say. Ah, okay. So people will have to watch to find out. If you're, if you're interested in that, go on your, your YouTube channel. Uh, obviously, it's just, it's just under your name, Carl Dixon. Just, no just my name, yes. No fancy names, no, you know, over the top, just straight to the point. Just your name. <laughs> straight to the point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's great to have you all, man. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed at least some of the pay-per-view. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, obviously, I'll be back with uh, another review. I'll be at Backlash in episode four. Uh, I cannot, again, cannot wait because I kind of, the bar's been lowered so far in this place. <laughs> so, can it go any higher? Well, I've, for I've been told, definitely it gets the, the peak. It gets better. It gets a light heavyweight championship match at Backlash. One of the most underrated matches of all time. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. If, if I find out you're, if I find out that it actually sucks, I'm going to, next time we talk, I'm going to rip into you about that. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, so what, just to finish off, so where can we find you on like social media and that kind of stuff? Uh, yes. Twitter, Twitter channel is at, at uh, Kyle Dixon. 95 now i'm showing my age um and twitch um it is again just my name carl dixon which uh you will hopefully be seeing more of yourself on it yes if you're if you listen to this and you're big in your football manager as um i've i've kind of i have no idea who people are but you know i've just uh just got fm20 and it's i'm actually enjoying it even if even if I got like the worst possible team to be, but yeah, so we have a network save going on, don't we? And as a Liverpool fan, you got Manchester United. I got Newcastle. That'll be uh, that's up on the YouTube channel as well. But if you want to watch it live, that'll be on Twitch. And I think I've plugged everything I can plug. So if anybody's still here, I think we just need to sign off. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I've pretty much. So yeah, this is my my retro review episode three with WrestleMania two thousand. I'm Mr. Irvine with my guest, Kyle Dixon, and um, hopefully we'll be back in the next episode where I look at Backlash 2000. Well, and everyone stay safe, and hopefully you'll be back soon. Have a good day. Bye.